You're listening to Find Your Feminine Fire, the podcast where we talk sex, love, and relationships, and all things that light you up from the inside out. I'm your host, Amanda Testa. Thanks so much for being here today. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Find Your Feminine Fire podcast. This is your host, Amanda Testa, and this week I am so excited I will be talking with Robin Nielsen. Welcome, welcome, Robin. So great to be here, Amanda. Thanks for having me. (laughs) Yes. Robin is a functional nutritionist. She is board certified in holistic nutrition with over 13 years of clinical experience. And she specializes in hormone balance and helping women grow younger no matter their age. We all love that. (laughs) <laughs> and she is the founder and CEO of Insight Health and Picos.com, PCOS.com, the world's most comprehensive company offering natural support to women with PCOS, empowering them to take charge of their bodies, their health, and their lives. And she's also the co-founder of Sexy Younger You. She has launched three summits and programs and interviewed over 150 of the world's leading health experts on the top strategies for aging well and balancing hormones. And I'm so excited to have you here and I'm really looking forward to our topic today, talking all about PCOS and balancing hormones and how this all relates to our sexual well-being. So welcome, welcome. It's great to be here. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm all about getting our sexy back, right? I just feel like it's, it's kind of the essence of being a woman, you know, and there's so many things that can get in the way of that. Is so true. And I would love if you wouldn't mind just kind of sharing a little bit of your story and what led you to the work that you do. Oh, gosh, I would love to. So I think what what really kind of spurred me on into this holistic health journey was just kind of persistent acne for me. And uh, I had a lot of other things that were going on for me, but that was one that I think was the hardest and, um, and something that was very, very hard for me to solve, kind of that acne puzzle and, you know, where I just had, you know, the breakouts definitely around my, my cycle um, for a very long time, right into my 30s and um, even very early 40s. So, got, you know, it got a lot better, but I still, I wanted, you know, completely clear, beautiful skin and that seemed to be really elusive for me. And I had other, a lot of other health concerns like, you know, digestive problems and I had arthritic symptoms in my hands in my 20s. And I think, you know, that's one of the things that we don't think about um, very often is that, these hormone imbalance issues, they don't age discriminate. So a lot of times what I see in women, you know, in their 20s with, uh, with symptoms of uh, PCOS or polycystic ovary syndrome is, the, is women postmenopausal have these exact same symptoms. And, you know, whether you have a diagnosis or not, I mean, that's, I, gosh, I never have had a PCOS diagnosis, but, you know, it's a condition that I've lived with my whole life. And I, and I think that it's important, you know, I was kind of old in my 20s, right? And much younger now that I'm in my 50s. <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> So we can be we can be young no matter what our age and I and I love that cuz you know that gives us hope and possibility and that's very exciting and uh, and I think that my libido is you know better now than it's ever been and it's you know, it just has to do with our, you know, our body's um, ability to, you know, function optimally or, or not. And, you know, there are always things I think that we're, we're kind of fighting against um, just with our busy lifestyles and what I call the hormone deal breakers. And, uh, and so those are things that, you know, we need to become aware of so that we can give our body the best opportunity to function well and feel fabulous. So, yeah, I just had some, some pretty, you know, pressing um, kind of chronic health issues that were really more of a bug than anything else. And of course, you know, with acne, it's, you know, it, I, it was on my face, my chest, my back. So kind of, kind of made me a little bit of a social introvert because I, you know, I was just embarrassed and um, couldn't, you know, didn't want to wear a bathing suit or anything low uh, necked or low in the back or, you know, anything that would show off my, you know, my inflamed red pimpled skin. Right. And then, you know, then I had these weight fluctuations too, that, you know, could gain five pounds in a day and, (laughs) and then it would be really hard to lose it. Right. And uh, so all these kind of weird things that we learn as women over exercise, under eat, 
to try to fix these things and it's just not the right way. And so I'd love if you would, if you wouldn't mind, would you go a little deeper on kind of what some of those hormone deal breakers you mentioned earlier would be? Absolutely. So we have kind of two states and one of the states is what I call rest and digest. And there's also, it's also called breed or feed, right? <laughs> one of my favorite authors is, um, is T.S. Wiley. I think she's passed away now, but she wrote a book called um, Lights Out. It's a fantastic book. I happen to love her writing style. It's all about how important sleep is for aging well. And, uh, you know, she talks about, um, you know, the feed and breed nervous system. Um, and it's really the rest and digest, or um, the more technical term is the parasympathetic. And that's where, you know, we're, we're making our sex hormones. That's where we're digesting our food. We're relaxed. The blood flow is more to the center of the body as opposed to, you know, the periphery, the fingers and the, the legs and the feet and toes and things like that. So it's, it's maybe more heart centered. So the blood flow, you know, is going down the middle of the body to help with all those things that help to keep us building and vibrant and strong. Then there's the sympathetic nervous system or the um, fight or flight nervous system. And that's where we're, we're busy doing. And it could be that we're stressed out, right? And mm-hmm. a lot of us are stressed a lot of the time. I'm sure that you see this in your audience. Oh, yes. Amanda, yeah. And that is that, that really suppresses our sex hormone production, it, um, especially if we're in a chronic state of fight or flight. So we're trying to, we're trying to basically keep from getting killed, right? That's, that's the physiological response that mm. you know, times have changed so rapidly that our physiology really hasn't adapted very well. So whether, whether you've lost your car keys or there really is a lion hunting you down, our body doesn't really distinguish the difference. Right? Or if you're just sitting in traffic and you're pissed off about it because you're late for something, that's putting your body in that fight or flight state. And that's when the blood goes to the periphery of your body. And now you're not making your sex hormones. You're making your survival hormones, right? So mm-hmm. you're making the cortisol, you're making more insulin because you've got to get that sugar into your cells so that you can run from the tiger, right? And, and stay alive. And so it suppresses your immune system. It suppresses the production of your sex hormones. It suppresses digestion. So, you know, even when we eat on the run, you know, we're, we're in kind of that fight or flight mode. We're in stress mode and we're not actually digesting our food well. And we're certainly not making our sex hormones. So that's how we need to get like really clear for ourselves. If we want to have this, you know, sexy, vibrant life, no matter what our age, if we're in our 20s or 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, whatever it is, then we've got to understand that if we want to make those sex hormones and be juicy down there, right, Mm -hmm. then we've, then we've, then we've got to get in the parasympathetic mode a little bit more that rest and digest mode or feed and breed as T.S. Wiley calls it. And, um, and there are some things that, you know, that can help us do that for sure. And, and then I'm going to share, I'd like to share some of the hormone deal breakers that you might not be aware of that are keeping you from, you know, making, balanced hormones because it's one thing to you know put your feet up and read a good book or you know sit at the dining room table for the evening meal and really let yourself digest well or have nice conversation do a girl's night out right those are all great things that can really feed your soul and put you in that really great hormone balancing state But then there are things that we're unaware of, and I call them the hormone deal breakers that keep our bodies chronically stressed and we just don't know it. Do you, do do any come up for you, Amanda, you know, as I'm talking? Well, you know what I think is interesting and how you mentioned we might have some things we may not realize at play, which is so common because you may think that you're doing all the right things for yourself. And on some levels that may be true, but a lot of the things that we've been taught as women on how to take care of ourselves aren't necessarily the things that are best for us. 
if you know what I mean. Like, for example, you know, exercise is great, but you want to do it the proper way. And, you know, you want to make sure you're eating enough fat and enough good, healthy food so that you, your body is producing the right hormones and mm-hmm. you know, all those kind of things versus, I know for myself too, you mentioned earlier about kind of some of the the diets that you had done in the past that did not serve you. And I can relate to that in my own experience as well. You know, starving myself or exercising far too much and, you know, really not doing my body any favors in that sense. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, you know, the starving diet is a good one for a day, but, you know, then eventually you have to eat. And then, you know, those food choices really dictate what what happens to your body, right? Yes, for sure. I mentioned uh, PCOS or polycystic ovary syndrome earlier, and it's interesting because it's it's the most common health condition facing women today. So it's diagnosed very frequently, and, um, and even if it's not diagnosed, it's still probably what's going on for you. And I would just love to touch on what some of the symptoms are and then what, you know, what those hormone deal breakers are that might be pushing you in that direction. Does that sound okay? Yeah, I would love that because yeah, not everyone may be even aware of what PCOS is. So yeah, I would love if you would share a little bit more. Yeah, it's great to, to sort of understand because if you understand if this resonates with you, if some of these symptoms resonate with you, then it's easier for you to figure out how to fix it. And so some of the symptoms, the main symptoms of PCOS are, and, and these, are, um, these are not what would be used for your doctor. The, the, you know, if you really want to get a formal diagnosis, um, then, then that's for another conversation. But for yourself, if you notice things like facial hair growth, right, or if you have this, this uh, like, a, you know, dark terminal hair like a man, maybe you have to pluck, maybe you have to shave once in a while. Um, It can grow on your face. It can grow on other parts of your body. That's a really good sign. Um, You know, mustache is very common for women and just know that you can stop that. You can, you can stop that dark facial hair growth. It's common, but it's not normal. So there's a pathway that's, that's happening there that it's going down. It's just going down. Your um, androgens are going down a more inflammatory pathway. And so you can definitely reverse um, dark hair growth, hair thinning or alopecia. You know, it's that male pattern hair loss. A lot of women pull out clumps of hair, you know, when they shower or when they're brushing their hair and they find it on the bathroom floor or in the shower. And that's a sign as well. So, you know, dark facial hair growth, the hair thinning, acne is a a major symptom of PCOS. And then, you know, weight gain. So there's thin PCOS and then there's also, um, you know, the heavy PCOS. And, And they're very similar in kind of the drivers and some of the root causes. But, you know, one is, is more insulin resistant and the more insulin resistant you are, the worse your symptoms, basically. So it's super easy for, um, if it's super easy for you to gain weight and it's very hard for you to lose weight, that's a great sign. Depression, anxiety are very big in the PCOS world. Infertility, it's the number one cause of infertility in women, and it's mostly due to irregular menstrual cycles and mostly the fact that um, if you have PCOS, you do not ovulate. And so a a very common remedy that the doctors use is um, a birth control pill, so hormonal birth control. And uh, it doesn't fix the situation by any any sense of the imagination because birth control actually blocks ovulation, but um, it makes you feel like you're having a regular cycle, even though you're not. So, you know, if you've been prescribed the birth control pill or metformin or spironolactone to manage your symptoms, chances are you have PCOS. There are many other symptoms as well. Those are the main ones. And of course, fatigue. You know, fatigue is a big one. Um, Not as much with thin PCOS. With thin PCOS, anxiety is a really big issue. You might feel stressed out a lot. You, You might have more digestive issues, maybe tend towards diarrhea as opposed to constipation with the heavier PCOS. Insomnia, it you know, it's just harder for you to go to sleep and stay asleep. You know, you're just kind of on edge a lot more and that's more of the thin PCOS. Yeah, I think I've touched on most of 
of the symptoms. So the biggies are the, you know, I never had the irregular menstrual cycle, although I'm sure if I, you know, were to go back, it, I'm sure there were parts that were not regular, but for me, it was, it was more the acne and, um, and skin conditions and the weight gain and things like that. Does anything come up for you around that, Amanda? Well, personally, I'm very grateful that I have not experienced these kind of symptoms, but I do have a lot of friends and, you know, close family that have. So I know that it can be, you know, really hard to deal with if you don't have the right tools. Right, right, for sure. And, you know, blood sugar issues, that's a big one. And of course, it gets worse as, you know, you get um, more down the path of PCOS. So kind of the more symptoms that you're experiencing, the more insulin resistant you're becoming. And so, you know, blood sugar swings are, are really a big part of this. And uh, some, sometimes, um, you know, a lot of women will say, oh, I don't have insulin resistance, but that's only because you were never tested for it. And so uh, it's really important to test fasting insulin so that you actually know, and you want that number to be for sure below 5.4, but below 5.2 or even lower is better. So those are the optimal ranges. But, you know, it's not a common test to run for physicians anymore. So, you know, a lot of women say, I'm not insulin resistant, but I have all these problems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so then I would say, yes, you are. All right. So some of those hormone deal breakers are things like nutrient deficiencies. So nutrients can really help our body um, to run efficiently and effectively. And if you're missing nutrients, then things are going to start to go sideways. And I think what I, you know, the reason I started out on the fight or flight rest and digest conversation was because you really have to be able to have everything you need to make your sex hormones. And Amanda, you had mentioned, you know, eating those healthy fats and, you know, cholesterol is the mother of all of our steroid hormones and that includes our sex hormones. So if we don't have that beautiful, healthy fat, then, you know, then we can't make um, our awesome hormones. So, you know, nutrient deficiencies, the wrong diet or the wrong food for you. And it's different for every woman. And so, you know, a lot of us know what's not right for us, right? But we eat it anyway. Yeah. So I think that just like understanding that and then being committed to, you know, maybe having it as a treat once a week instead of having it every day could be super beneficial for um, you know, your love life and just how you feel. And, you know, we need, we need really good energy for libido and, and for participating in a nice connection. And, uh, and so many things can undermine that. Food is one of them. And the wrong type of exercise, we talked about this a little bit already. You know, I learned to, to over-exercise and under-eat. And we tend to think more is better. And so many women with hormone imbalance try harder right? And as a result, their stress levels just go up and up and up and up. And then um, remember when stress levels go up, your sex drive, sex hormone production, all of that um, goes down, gets out of balance. Inadequate rest and sleep. I think sleep is a really big one. We could talk about this for a long time because it's one of my favorites. I think sleep is so luxurious and, you know, we treat it as a, you know, as sort of a, oh, I gotta get, you know, gotta go to bed. It's like a chore, but it's not really a Sure. It's one of those things that can just reset everything, right? If you get a great night's sleep, you feel so wonderful. Your body is way sexier the next day. I mean, you know, you can fit into your jeans um, because you're not as inflamed. Um, it actually resets insulin sensitivity. There's so many cool things about sleep that I could go on and on about. I do love my sleep. And that was one of the things I think that was the hardest part. Motherhood was that lack of sleep. My daughter did not sleep through the night till she was about two years old. Wow. And looking back, I was like, no wonder I was such a raving B-I-T-C-H half the time because <laughs> I wasn't sleeping at all. Yeah, you're so tired. You're so tired and it just kind of sucks your energy. And I mean, I know how it is for me. If I don't get a good night's sleep, I'm just grumpy. <sighs> I think I have better tools now, though, that I didn't have then. If I wish, if I had, you know, I kind of wish in hindsight, I knew what I knew now back then, I probably would have found ways to make my body feel more rested. But at the time, I didn't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right. I know we're always told, make sure that you rest with your child, right? Take a nap when your child sleeps. And you're like, heck no, I got so much to do. <laughs> 
right? You're like, I got my free 45 minutes or whatever. My daughter didn't sleep very long either. So some people are like two hours naps. That was not our situation. However, yes, you do. It is hard to, to prioritize that. Yeah, it is. But just know that it's, you know, if you need a reset, oh my gosh, sleep is so great. And then, you know, toxins, like toxins are these crazy weird, you know, chemicals that are in everything. And and the bummer is that we, we don't really, we can't really see them a lot of times. And so we don't know they're around, but, you know, they're in your cosmetic products and they're in your laundry detergent and your house cleaning products. And they're in your, uh, your makeup and your shampoo and they're everywhere, right? And they're in your garden and they're on your food. A lot of women tend to be poor toxin metabolizers. And, um, and also there, m- many of these toxins are what are called endocrine or hormone disruptors, and they mm-hmm. act like potent estrogens. And so they bind to your, um, your sex hormone receptor sites and many other, even thyroid and adrenal receptor sites. And as a result, they completely mess with your hormone balance and they just make you feel really yucky and kind of too estrogenic. And so then it just exacerbates kind of the progesterone to estrogen balance. And that progesterone is, you know, it's our nature's Valium, right? It makes us feel so, so good and so relaxed and so connected. And when that gets disrupted, it's a real bummer for connection. So toxins are a biggie and uh, low thyroid function is a big one, you know, that because it really affects our metabolism, our motivation, a lot of things. And so, you know, making sure that you get the right thyroid panel run and really understanding because so many women have low thyroid function and just don't know it. And then low adrenal function, you know, if we've been running um, on overdrive for very many years, you know, chances are you're just not putting out enough cortisol to feel great every day. Cortisol is our get up and go hormone that is our daytime hormone. It's what gives us the energy to function every day. And without enough adrenal um, hormones like cortisol, right, then we're not going to have good melatonin, good nighttime hormone potentially, because they support each other and they work together. So every, you know, it's, it's this, it's this symphony, right? Of hormones, every hormones are our cellular communicators. It's really our communication system. So when one is out of whack, chances are others are going to be out of whack too. And then just, you know, a lack of support. So if you're not around your peeps, right, you're not around those who love you and support you unconditionally, and maybe who have been where you want to go, or sorry, who've been where you have been, but also are where you want to go, then it's pretty tough because, you know, we have a bunch of people putting us down all the time. And I know for me, you know, I'm a nutritionist. And so I, I eat weird, right? It's so funny. I, I, of course, I think that I'm the norm, but really I'm not the norm, right? Eating whole real food is by far not the norm. And, uh, and so you know, I am very often not with my peeps and, you know, I get a lot of weird comments like, why don't you just eat that? Right. I'm like, well, what is that? Right. <laughs> so, you know, if you're surrounded by people who are constantly telling you to do something that you don't want to do, then, you know, then you're lacking that, that great support. Um, a sluggish or fatty liver, you know, which is super common. So if your doctor has told you that you have a fatty liver, very common with PCOS and um, hormone imbalance issues. If you have any infections going on, any chronic infections, that's very common too. And you can tell that by looking at your white blood cells. Um, you look at your neutrophils and lymphocytes, you kind of get an idea of what's going on there. And if your white blood cells are over eight, um, that's, a, that's an acute infection. Under five, that's a chronic infection. And those things can really keep you down, mm-hmm. right? Poor, poor microbiome balance, so poor gut balance. Um, you know, we've probably heard... Um, a lot of people talk about having healthy gut, you know, healthy uh, bacteria. We have like three to five pounds of bacteria in our gut that has to be happy. And so just, you know, need to be aware of that. And, you know, if you're just too busy, that's a huge hormone deal breaker. Negative thoughts, right? Thoughts become things. So it's really important to kind of control your thoughts uh, somewhat, you know, when a negative thought comes in, turn it around to be something that empowers you. And then um, poor fat metabolism, 
And that's true for a lot of women. We just, um, we just don't metabolize our fats very well. So maybe we're eating the right fats, but we're not metabolizing them very well. So, you know, really supporting liver and gallbladder function is really important. And of course, our genetics, right? Our genetics are kind of the loaded gun. And then how we take care of ourselves uh, pulls the trigger or not. So it's not our genetics fault. It's our lifestyle. It's how we choose to live that, that ends up being the problem. But those are some of the main hormone deal breakers. Are there any others that you can think of? Well, I mean, I think that that was a pretty thorough, a thorough coverage for, you know, I think the main ones, but I would also be curious, you know, if you are noticing these things, or if you're having these problems, what would you advise as some solutions around that? That is such a great question. We have a um, an amazing conference coming up. It's an, uh, an online conference called Natural Solutions for PCOS. Because there are, so, I mean, there are millions of women out there who suffer from PCOS and maybe know it, but maybe don't know it. And they certainly don't know that there are natural solutions. And the really cool part is that well, it's so funny. I say it's really cool. There's no medical solution. And for really any chronic disease, there there really isn't a medical solution. Unless without it, you'll die, right? That's a more acute situation. So for a chronic condition like PCOS, it's really, it's really in your hands, right? So if you're suffering from the symptoms that I mentioned, or your hormones are just kind of out of whack, the Natural Solutions for PCOS Conference um, is amazing for helping to reset your hormones. There are 45 hormone experts um, in this program. And whether you have PCOS or not, it's a fabulous place to learn how to balance your hormones. Everywhere from you know, a regular menstrual cycle, ovulating, menopause, pause, the keto diet, how to exercise from some amazing exercise um, uh, physiologists. And oh my gosh, we talk about just everything around hormones and food is one of those things. So you know, it really comes down to learning what works for you. And I think that the conference would be a fantastic place to start because you can pick and choose the interviews that really resonate with you and where you feel you are with your hormones. And then you can just start there. And uh, we even go over like what tests to run and what the optimal values are, because I'm really big on optimal versus laboratory reference ranges. So I think you have to test, don't guess, but you also don't want to compare your numbers to sick people, right? Because those are the laboratory reference ranges for the most part. And your doctor is only going to say that there's a problem when you're outside of those laboratory reference ranges. And that means that you have disease now. So, so with PCOS, so with a lot of the symptoms I mentioned, if you don't do something now, they morph into really serious things like diabetes. It's kind of the cousin to PCOS. And then there's um, heart disease is huge, you know, in women with PCOS. And um, so just, you know, cancer is a little bit farther down the road. So there's all these things that can happen if we don't take charge now. And so, you know, my whole thing is to become empowered around your health. And so I try to give, I try to give our community all the resources they need to understand just how to do that, right? What is it I'm supposed to eat? What tests am I supposed to run? What are healthy ranges that I'm supposed to compare myself to and, you know, work towards, Um, How am I supposed to exercise? What does sleep look like for me? And how do I fall asleep? And how do I stay asleep? And what does a really good supportive community look like? And how do I tell if I have any chronic infections or if I have toxin overload? Like those are all things that we not only share in the conference, but um, also in our on our website and our programs. So yeah, I think the conference is a great place to start. Oh, beautiful. And I'll make sure to post a link in the notes of how you can access that. And there are so many amazing experts that you have interviewed. So I think I'm really looking forward to tuning in. And, uh, and I know, you know, obviously, we talk so much around sexuality on this podcast. And I know this is an issue that really does affect your sexual health. And so wanting to share more about some solutions around this is so powerful. Yeah, you know, you just, you want to feel well, right? You want, you want to feel well. And when you feel well, 
you're so much more attractive and you're so much more attracted. You know, you just, you just have that inner spark. You know, I saw that picture on your website of you, you know, being in your feminine power or yeah, something like that. I don't know if I'm using the right yeah, word. Totally. And you were just yeah. looking gorgeous, right? Like you were radiating this amazing um, energy and vibe and like sexual vibrance and and you know these things that I talked about today can really affect that, you know, and, and they don't have to. I mean, you know, you can you can have mind over matter for sure, but at some point it becomes this total load thing and you just become so overwhelmed with so many things that you're trying to overcome that you just can't you just can't be all that. And so be nice to sort of clear some of that away, clear some of the junk away so that you can just, you know, sit in that beautiful feminine power place. It's so true. And I, and I truly believe that our sexual health is a direct reflection of our health as women. So mm -hmm. things are often, you know, not really given the attention that they deserve. And many times I hear women tell me that, They'll mention some concerns to their doctor and then they're just dismissed or maybe they just are, you know, don't really feel comfortable bringing up truly what's going on with them to their doctors, which happens. So I think being able to learn on your own what supports you and then going to find the providers that support you and that, you know, find the healthcare practitioners that are going to, you know, support you and listen to you and be able to help you get healthy is so key no matter yeah. what form that comes into. And there's wonderful traditional medicine doctors out there. There's wonderful functional medicine practitioners and nutritionists mm -hmm. and people like yourself. So I love that you're bringing all these experts together to really offer a vast array of solutions. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, if your doctor has told you that you're just fine, <laughs> we call that a four letter word, and you, and you don't <laughs> feel just fine, <laughs> then do not take that for an answer, right? Your doctor works for you. So find another doctor or press further, you know, and that's why it's so cool to really understand all about your health and what it is that you need, because then you can direct your healthcare. You can say, look, I want these tests. This is going on for me. It's not okay, right? I don't feel fine. You may think I'm fine. I don't feel fine. I need solutions. So that's, that's where, you know, we give you the tools to be your own health advocate, right? Be, I say be the goddess of your own health. Yeah, or, you know, if CEO resonates better, that's great. Be the CEO, but whatever it is, just be in charge. And, and then, you know, then you have no one to blame but yourself if you don't feel well, I guess. But it's all about, you know, being empowered and not, and not giving, not giving your power to someone else. I think, I think, you know, maybe that is the case. It's that, you know, we, we blame somebody else for the fact that we're not feeling well when really we, we have had the, the keys to our health the whole time. That's so beautiful. And I, I have to say, I feel grateful for my husband. He is a holistic healthcare provider and he really opened my eyes. We got together 10 years ago and really helped me transform my health in so many ways because I think at that point in my life, I was just so trusting of the doctor that they knew everything. And really that was giving my power away. Granted, I am healthy and I didn't really have any issues, which is good. But for the most part, his, his you know, just motivation to really be empowered around my health has helped me to be more vibrant in so many ways. And you know, I, when my daughter was born, I became a personal trainer. I've always been really interested in health as well. And so I think that, you know, all these are all keys that lead to us being our most vibrant self. And, you know, I, of course, fo focus on the sexuality piece because I find for me, that was where so much was locked away and so much still needed to be healed and released. And through that, I just found additional pieces to the puzzle, right? That... Yeah you know, we all work in a whole. And I love that view of our, of our bodies and ourselves as a whole versus p different pieces that need to be looked at and analyzed in different ways. It's like, it's all this one functioning being and we need to address it that way. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Our head is definitely connected to our body. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Despite what anyone tells you, we're all connected. We're all one. Yeah. I mean, that's the, that's the cool thing. I mean, what's going on in my heel is probably, you know, starting in my brain somewhere. I don't know. Right. And I'm sure, you know, I, I don't know if you find this too, but I'm sure that, you know, one of the things I see so much is a lot of trauma that 
you know, women are dealing with. And I'm, sh- and I know that shows up in physical form. I've seen Absolutely. It Tra- trauma is huge, right? Trauma is this, this, this huge ongoing stressor that, that is always playing out in the background. And so trauma is, is something that, you know, needs to be addressed. It's definitely a hormone deal breaker. And, you know, so it's, it's as important as every other one of those things I mentioned. I so appreciate all this amazing wisdom that you've shared. And I would love, you know, is there anything that I asked, um, or excuse me, that I didn't ask that you wished I would have had asked or any last words that you'd like to share with the listeners today? I think we've covered most everything. You know, I think if you just take away the fact that, you know, you're your own best health advocate, right? And, and you are the goddess of your own health and you hold the keys to your health and well-being and sexuality. I think that's it, you know, um, then you will just that awareness will help you to seek out the support and guidance that you need. So beautiful. Thank you so much. And again, you can find out more about Robin at PCOS.com. And I'll also make sure to share the link for the summit so you can register and get access to all those experts. She has so many great videos that are going to be coming up on the summit to support you in your healing and just learning the best tools to support yourself. And as she says, which I love this, Robin, being the goddess of your own health. Thank you so much for having me, Amanda. Everyone. Thank you so much for listening to the Find Your Feminine Fire podcast. This is your host, Amanda Testa, and it would mean the world to me if you enjoyed this episode to please share it. Go to iTunes and give me a five-star rating and a rave review so I can meet other wonderful listeners like you to continue these open and honest conversations. You can always find me on Facebook in my group, Find Your Feminine Fire group and also on my website, amandatesta.com. Thanks so much again. 